time will call this meeting to order. Clerk of the board, please call the roll. Commissioner Baker. Um, present. Oh, what, what, what yeah. are we asking yeah. about here? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Starting the meeting. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Bodek. Present. Commissioner Garrickson. Present. Commissioner Kowalski. Here. Commissioner Leone. Here. Commissioner Mirabella. Present. Commissioner Williams. Here. Vice Chairwoman Palmieri Muded. And Chairman Granados. Here. Chairman, you have nine commissioners present for this evening's regular meeting. Thank you very much. Clerk of the board, please lead us in the prayer and salute to the flag. Humbly we ask God to give us peace and love of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will, and to grant the light of his spirit on all who look for justice and peace. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Clerk of the board, please read a statement of compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. The chair wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of New Jersey statutes annotated, Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting to the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2023, along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstance to the newspapers circulating within the County of Union who are designated to receive such notice and by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2023 in the administration building, and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2023 with the office of the county clerk. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to approve the communications? Second. The motion was made by Commissioner Mirabella, and quickly seconded by Commissioner Leon. I got this one. <laughs> clerk of the board, please call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Baker. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Bodek. Yes. Commissioner Garrickson. Yes. Commissioner Kowalski. Yes. Commissioner Leone. Aye. Commissioner Mirabella. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Vice Chairwoman Palmieri Muded. Aye. And Chairman Granados. Aye. Chair, please let the record reflect. We have nine votes in the affirmative for all of the communications. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So oh. moved. Second. That was the 10th commissioner phoning in. Make sure we voted. Uh, <laughs> a motion was made by Commissioner Kowalski. Is it? No, I no. seconded. Oh, Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Kowalski. Clerk of the board, please call the roll. Commissioner Baker. Aye. To all. Right? Uh, aye for all, all correct. Minutes, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Aye to all. Commissioner Bodek. Yes. Commissioner Garrettson. Yes. Commissioner Kowalski. Yes. Commissioner Leone. Aye. Commissioner Mirabella? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Vice Chairman Palmieri Muded? Aye. And Chairman Granados? Aye. Chairman, that's nine votes in the affirmative on all of the minutes. Thank you very much. The meeting is open to the public for the purpose on commenting on resolutions being offered for adoption and or any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and if speaking on resolution to on the agenda, Please note the resolution to which you're referring and adhere to the five minute time limit. Good evening, uh, Chair Granados, ladies and gentlemen, the Commissioner Board, Bruce Patterson, Garwood, New Jersey. Uh, Rezo 499 is contracting with Radiac Research for Kevin County household hazardous waste collection events. Uh, I appreciate uh, Director Graziano answering uh, as to the one-year extension. Uh, last year, it was actually grant-funded, and now it isn't, so uh, I don't know if somebody could just explain why not. Uh, Rezo 503 is extending a contract to Universal Protection for providing security for the county's cornerstone behavioral unit at Runnels for $463,000 for one year. Uh, the question, last year was only 440000 so why uh, the 5% increase? Also, wh why isn't security being covered by center management who owns and is supposed to provide security for the whole complex? Uh, Rezo 504 is paying Halicon 948000 for providing improvements to the Cedar Brook tennis courts. I appreciate County Manager Oatman actually explaining some of the scope. <coughs> But I mean, $1 million, uh, the 
cost for these improvements. I, I mean, this is an obscene number. I, I guess just for reiteration, could you please explain the scope again? Uh, Reso 507 and 512 is adding $150,000 and $350,000 in New Jersey grant monies for gunshot detection technology initiative. Question. In the last meeting, we received $350,000 in ARPA monies for gunshot detection technology, which was fully explained by Director Moran. Uh, what is this additional $500,000 for? And, and just as an aside, is Director Moran still with us or so? I saw there's a, a temporary person that came up. Uh, Reso 524 and 525 are adding $600,000 each for emergency housing and rental assistance for residents in need now totaling $8.8 .8 million. I'm assuming these are uh, separate allocations. I noted the other year, due to the pandemic impact, this severely needed program could cost upwards 10 to $15 million. Uh, it's good we are using ARPA monies, but the question is how much leftover ARPA monies are encumbered for our county's use? Uh, Reso 531 is a multiple faceted legal case, Figueroa versus Union County et al. Uh, going back nearly 15 years for harassment and retaliation in the Sheriff's Department. Uh, various resos have and had many different legal firms working on this. This one is listed at $15,000. Last month there was one for $12,000. Uh, since it appears a lot of tax monies are being spent, the public would like to know what is the total out ongoing expenditure over these many years for this multiple faceted lawsuit. Uh, Reso 539 is recognizing Democrat political boss and state senator Nicholas Scutari being honored at a 2023 Keene University Gala. Uh, for the last 20 years, the county watchers, the media, and others have been exposing the abusive, corrupted political system in this county and the state. Uh, and we find boss Scutari is just the newest enabler of this sad system. For the night, the politically connected minions will dance around their golden idol of Scutari and keep his corrupted system alive and well. Uh, the new rezo that was just added, uh, number 532, uh, there's a proposed settlement in the lawsuit of Susan Tamburi versus County of Union et al. It was vaguely explained in the past, but the allegations were regarding a youth in our cornerstone unit of Runnels was held down against the will by five county agents for an hour until he suffocated uh, the plaintiffs allege this was similar to the Eric Garner death. But as, as a taxpayer, uh, I appreciate the, the work that was done to keep this cost impact to a minimum to the taxpayers. And I'm just wondering if our um, insurance is covering that. It was, it was $100,000, I notice, on the new resolution. Thank you very much. Right. Starting off with number 540. Uh, Senate President Scutari is a proud graduate of King University and someone who's been extremely active when it comes to King University and helping out any way he can when it comes to students, <laughs> alumni, and President Repolet, um, someone who I think deserves this honor and somebody who's a staple in not only at King University but throughout the state of New Jersey for his efforts for providing a higher quality education for all residents in the state of New Jersey. So. I look forward to him receiving this recognition at the Kane Gala. Now, next, uh, 531, 532, County Council Bergen, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, 531, um, the question was what the total cost was. Uh, Chairman, I just don't have that figure with me. I certainly can uh, supply that to, uh, to the commissioners and uh, to Mr. Patterson at some point in the future. Um, we, we do have records, but I don't, just don't know the figure off the top of my head. On uh, number 532, the question was whether the uh, 100000 settlement was covered by insurance. It is, it is not. There are insurance companies involved in the settlement for other parties. Um, our self-insured retainage is above the 100000 so that, that is a, a cost from our uh, fund for settlement cases. Thank you very much, County Thank Council. You. County Manager 504, 524, 525, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in regards to Cedar Brook, it's a total of eight courts. Um, they're going to be repaved, lights, fencing, and landscape improvements. Also, there'll be pickleball overlays on the tennis courts, so they'll be dual use. The courts are 25 years old, and these are first major uh, renovations since that. The bid, we go out to low bid. 
this was the winning bid was three percent low the, of the budget estimate there was a second bidder which was 20 percent higher as for the other two resolutions it is one six hundred thousand dollars not two one's to authorize the use of the funds one's to amend the contract and as for your question about the ARPA funds i do not have that handy i'm sorry i'll have to get that for you 499 thank, you, thank you county manager 499 director graziano This is 100% grant funded, but I also want to clear up something else too. This is uh, this is an exception to bidding. So this is a new contract with them. Recycling falls under the exception to bidding uh, rules for the state, and it is 100% grant funded. Thank you very much. You're 503, Director Anderson. Chairman, I, oh, I think I can better answer that. Okay. The sure. the question was why cor um, center management is not paying for this. Our contract with center management is for administrative services and has nothing to do with uh, uh, protective services, so it would not be in their contract. Thank you. Thank you very much. Reference to 507-512, Director Taylor. Chairman, 507 is actually a grant award to the Department of Public Safety County Police, and 512 is an award to the prosecutor's office. One is intelligence-driven implementation of the gunshot detection system. The other is for expanding and implementing the gunshot detection system for county police purposes. Providing community uh, safer communities all around in the county of Union. Thank you very much, Director Taylor. Seeing. No one else. We will close that portion of the meeting. And so may have a motion to provide resolutions 2023-491 through 2023-546. So moved. Second. Motion is made by Commissioner Baker, seconded by Commissioner Mirabella and Commissioner no. Williams. First it and Commissioner Mirabella was second. Clerk of the board, please call the roll. <coughs> For the approval of resolutions, Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Bodek. Yes. Commissioner Garrison. Yes. Commissioner Kowalski. Yes. Commissioner Leone. Aye. Commissioner Mirabella. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Vice Chairman Palmieri Mudead. Aye. And Chairman Granados. Aye. Chairman, you have nine votes in the affirmative for all resolutions. Thank you very much. We'll move on to commissioner reports and comments. We'll start with Commissioner Kowalski. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to uh, thank everyone who participated in the primary election and uh, look forward to um, congratulating the winners when things are certified. Thank you. That's it for me tonight. Thank you very much. Commissioner Baker. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Union County Board of County Commissioners in, in partnership with the Department of Human Services and the American Job Center will host a transportation, logistics, and supply chain job fair for Union County residents 18 and older. It will take place on Thursday, June 22nd, uh, 2023, to be exact, 10 a.m. at the Warnacle Sports Center located at One Park Drive in Roselle. Salaries start at $25 an hour. Some of the companies included in the event are Clean Harbors, FedEx, Farmland, United Window, Coach USA, and Wake Firm. If there are any companies who would like to participate in this job fair, uh, please contact Carolina Mar Marin at Astrid dot marin at ucnj dot org or 908-3380-6237. For more information, uh, you can contact the American Job Center oh boy. at AGC business, business, business team. Ah, that's it. AGC business team at ucnj.org or visit www 
www.ucnj.org slash job fair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Baker. Commissioner Mirabella. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The Union County Board of County Commissioners is proud to announce that the New Jersey Department of Transportation has awarded the county $1.5 million in funding uh, for the Transportation Alternative Set-Aside Program or the Raritan Valley Rails to Trails Program. This project will create safe, multi-use trails in the abandoned Railway Valley Railroad section that traverses the borough of Kenilworth and the borough of Roselle Park. These new trails, designed for pedestrians, bicyclists, bicyclists, will connect communities, businesses, shopping, and recreational opportunities. The Rawway Valley Rails to Trails project paves the way for a brighter future where safe and accessible multi-use trails brings people together, boosts local businesses, creates jobs, and unlocks the beauty of our county. The completion of this project will significantly improve the modes of transportation in the county, specifically as it relates to cyclists and pedestrian walkways. The county has uh, seen a growing number of trail enthusiasts and conversion of the Va Raritan Valley Railroad into an active greenway trail will give residents more opportunities to exercise in and explore our county. The County of Union selection as a transportation alternative set aside program funding highlights the NJDOT's commitment to enhancing transportation, infrastructure, and creating vibrant, accessible communities. I know many members of this board are interested in this project. Uh, I know uh, Director Durbin Drake has uh, participated in many meetings with a, a private group that's um, kind of pushing this program, uh, Connect Union County. Uh, it's a good, it's a good group and a hardworking group volunteering to see. This is the first of, of hopefully many uh, rails to trails projects uh, coming in the future. So I'm excited about this, and it's a good acknowledgement of of that group's efforts, the county efforts, to uh, get this um, program starting. Um, Besides that, I want to congratulate all graduates for the last uh, several weeks and coming up. I don't care if people are graduating from kindergarten or middle school or high school. Um, it's, it's college. It's uh, really a, uh, a, a quite an achievement, and this is the time of year we celebrate our graduates. I had the opportunity to attend uh, three college graduations at Union College, Kane University Graduate Program, and Wenzhou Kane University, and it was uh, terrific to see the bright future we have in, this, in the face of our, uh, our graduates in our community. Uh, I do want to uh, thank uh, the county manager for his work on communicating the health, um, I'll call it the health crisis over the last couple of days with the uh, Canadian um, smoke, I guess? All that, all those things. Um, but I thought, um, at his direction, the county responded well, communicated to the public the danger, uh, and really um, helped people understand what the situation was. People walked out their front door and didn't have any idea what was going on. And uh, I thought our communication was, was uh, spot on and, and uh, very timely. Uh, with that, I'll uh, conclude my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Commissioner Mirabella. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we are also pleased to invite the public to attend two events in Union County in honor of Juneteenth. Uh, first is a special free movie presentation of The Woman King at Cedarbrook Park in Plainfield on Saturday, June 17th at 8 p.m. The film will start at dusk. Uh, it's a film that came out last year offering a fictional representation of the historic, historical West African Kingdom of Dahomey. It tells the story of an all-female elite warrior unit called the Agoji and their quest for freedom and justice. It's a great film starring Viola Davis, and um, I encourage everyone to come out. It is rated PG-13, and there may be some subject matter not suitable for children under the age of 13, and there will be popcorn uh, for free while supplies last. So come on out and join us for The Woman King. Uh, also, residents are invited to the fourth annual Juneteenth flag raising ceremony 
on Monday, June 19th, which is actually Juneteenth, um, at 10 a.m. in front of the Union County Courthouse, right around the corner to Broad Street here in Elizabeth. Uh, the Juneteenth flag, as many of you probably know by now, was created in 1997 to commemorate June 19th, 1865, where citizens of Galveston, Texas, were finally notified about the uh, end of the Civil War and complete abolition of slavery. Uh, President Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation two years earlier, uh, but for reasons that <coughs> are known to some, um, they were not notified uh, down there in Galveston. The flag raising will feature a poet uh, poetry reading by a young man who's turning out to be the county commissioner's poet laureate, uh, <laughs> Jeremiah Laporte, uh, and I will do a reading of General Order 3, which is when um, the residents there in Galveston were informed that slavery and had, had ended. Uh, there will also be a performance of Lift Every Voice and Sing as a duet performed by Julia Arnold Bowie and Willow Frazier, students at the Academy for Performing Arts in Scotch Plains. And for more uh, information about the Juneteenth flag ceremony, please contact Judith Guest, Community Engagement and Diversity Coordinator at judith.guest at ucnj.org or at 908-527-4388. And um, in closing, it is Pride Month, so happy Pride, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you much, Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Dr. Angela Garrison. Everybody took all the good comments, so I echo what he said, she said, and he said, <laughs> and she said. Um, and just have a good night, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Bodek. The Union County Board of County Commissioners, the Department of Human Services, and the Office, uh, and the Office for Persons with Disability are pleased to invite our Union County residents for their night out with the New York Red Bulls event in honor of the 33rd anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act. July 26, 2023 marks the 33rd anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act, ADA. The event is Saturday, July 8, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. at the Red Bull Arena in Harrison. Tickets for the Red Bull game are $35 and will include a $10 food voucher to use at the venue. Union County residents can purchase their tickets online through the Union County Secure Registration website www.ucnj.org slash opdsn dash reg. Union County regularly hosts inclusive programs for children and adults with autism through the Union County Office for Persons with Disability and Special Needs under the Division of Individual and Family Support Services of the Union County Department of, Union of Human Services. The Office for Persons with Disability and Special Needs is the first such office in New Jersey established in 2018 in the Department of Human Services. To find out more about special needs programs hosted by Union County, visit www.ucnj.org slash DHS slash OPDSN or call 908-527-4807. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Commissioner Bodek. Commissioner Leon? Yes, thank you, Chairman. The Union County Board of Commissioners is pleased to invite children age 12 and under, accompanied by an adult, to attend the Special Needs Night at Wheeler Park, which is located at 234 West Simpson Avenue in Linden. This program will take place every Thursday in July and August from 6.30 p.m. to 7.45. The first session will begin on July 6th. This night at Wheeler Park is a series organized through our Office of Persons with Disabilities and Special Needs in the Union County Department of Human Services. The attendees will have an opportunity to spend the night at Wheeler Park, which is 11,000 square foot water playground, and it's going to be packed with 30 attractions, including a pirate ship, waterfall, water sprinklers, slides, sprayers, and even a giant water serpent. The event is free, but you need to pre-register online. 
if, in case of rain, um, you can check our website at ucnj.org for updates or closures. Um, visitors can check uh, more information about Special Needs Night at Wheeler Park and all recreation programs for people with special needs and disabilities at ucnj.org slash DHS slash OPDSN or call 908-527-4781. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. County Council? Nothing this evening. Thank you, Chairman. County Manager? Nothing, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you much. Vice Chair? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Union County Board of County Commissioners and the Department of Parks and Recreation are looking for volunteers in the Ashbrook Reservation Adopt a Park event on Saturday, June 17th from 9 a.m. to noon. The event will be focused on removing leaves and debris from a drainage swale that flows to the Ashbrook, an important waterway within the Rahway River watershed. Um, the project will be directed by the Union County Parks Environmental Services staff uh, with all of the tools supplied by Union County Parks. This Adopt-A-Park event will take place at the Ashbrook Reservation meeting location in the County Votech parking lot at 1776 Raritan Road in Scotch Plains. Um, any interested residents should register at www.ucnj.org forward slash Ashbrook 23. And I'd also like to mention, I know I talked about it at the last meeting, our Kids Dig In Community Garden Grants, um, but we just keep going to them because we had so many apply this year. And I, f I feel like every time I go to one, it gets better and better. And it's really just a tremendous thing that our residents get to experience, everyone from our senior residents at their community centers or libraries, to our students with disabilities in schools that are either um, immersed schools or schools totally devoted to our students with disabilities, to our little tiny two-year-old preschoolers um, that visit some of the libraries that have the gardens. So it is such a tremendous program and I went to um, Winfield Park School on um, last week one day uh, to view their garden. So they gave us a tour and it is one of the most tremendous things I've ever seen. And it was exciting because we always go there at the beginning and we give them the seeds and we help them plant. And you see all these little things that are so small. And this was a full-fledged flourishing garden that kids from preschool through eighth grade um, get to experience. And it gives them not only the um, information on how to garden, uh, but the importance of doing that in their communities. So it's just, I just can't say enough about what a great program it is. And just correct me if I'm wrong, Vice Chair, um, one of the great things, part of it too, is that they actually, Winfield, I know we were talking about how they donate back. Thank you. I meant to say that, yes, they, they do donate it back to their own community. So there is a community center um, with seniors that are local and they do donate and they, they were supposed to harvest and I was gonna go today, um, but it got canceled because of the weather, but they do every Friday harvest their, their items and they, they um, give it over to the community center and then other families within the community um, in need and that's what most of them do. So it's just really, and I got to taste the strawberry, they had millions of strawberries um, that they grew and, and blueberries and it was just, it was amazing, so yeah. anyway. That's all I have to say, but I, I love the program. Thank you. Thanks, Vice Chair. We appreciate it. Uh, the Union County Board of County Commissioners are proud to announce as part of uh, this year's Stepping Up to Mental Health Initiative through my 2023 Chairman's theme of Building a Stronger Union County, the upcoming event Mental Health Roundtable focused on children and youth on June 13th, 2023. This event will bring together key stakeholders, experts, and community members to discuss and address the critical issue of access, equity, and affordability of behavioral health services for children and youth in the county. This roundtable is a significant step in Union County's commitment to prioritizing mental health and providing a platform for collective action on how we can move forward together in helping our communities and residents who may be facing or know someone who's facing mental health issues. This event will be held from 9.30 to 3 p.m. at King University's Liberty Hall Academic Center, located at 1003 Morris Avenue, Building 2 in Union, New Jersey. It will feature panel discussions led by prominent figures in the field, including NJDCF Children's Systems of Care, Improving Access, Equity and Affordability for Children and Adolescent Behavioral Health Services, Union County Schools, and Hospital Systems. Recently, the state of New Jersey allocated $5 million in funding 
for the Union County Mental Health Project, which will help expand access, equity, and affordability for children, adolescent, behavioral health care services. In addition, and in thanking Governor Phil Murphy and Senate President Nicholas Katari, who helped us with the funding, they'll also be present in providing valuable insight on ways to explore strategies to improve this access and speak about subsidies. I'd like to thank our Union County Department of Human Services, Director Anderson, for all your hard work in coordinating this event along our other county departments. Thank you very much. With that said, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion was made by Commissioner Mirabella, seconded by Vice Chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>